Good morning. As we begin our worship this morning, I'm going to start with the land acknowledgement. Um, if you want to follow along, it's on the bottom of page seven. We respectfully recognize and acknowledge that we are on traditional ancestral lands of the Osage and Sioux nations. The process of acknowledging the land we stand on is a way of accepting our complicity in a process of colonization that removed the Osage people from their ancestral lands. We also make this acknowledgement to affirm our commitment to stand with indigenous communities today as they seek justice and resist continued threats to their sovereignty and humanity. We are also cognizant that we cannot separate the history of the Episcopal Church from the history of colonialism and slavery in the United States. 400 plus years ago, the first enslaved Africans were brought to the Americas. We acknowledge the legacy of slavery in this area and the blood, sweat, and tears of enslaved people that soaked the earth beneath our feet in Missouri. This legacy persists today as we continue to work towards racial justice, equity, liberation, and community here in Missouri and in the Episcop across the Episcopal Church.
Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Calvary, and welcome to those of you joining us online. Let us have the children and children's chapel folks come forward so we can send them forth with a blessing. Yes. You ready? Well, let us pray. May God bless you and the Spirit guide you as you learn together and grow in Christ's love. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Bye, all. Our service continues on page 355 or in your bulletin. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. God is with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. A reading from Acts. Peter addressed the people. You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at this? As though by your own power or piety, we had made this man walk. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy and Righteous One and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, his name him itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know, and the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he foretold through all the prophets and that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God.
a reading from the first letter of John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the Lord's pe God's people. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? 
They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. One of the things that draws me to Jesus is that I know he shared so much of our suffering. Here he appears to the disciples, and even in resurrected form, having conquered death, he still bears the marks of the crucifixion on his hands and his feet. We can relate to him in part because he's been wounded and carries scars just like us. As poignant as this is, somehow Jesus as, is at his most relatable to me when he asks the disciples, hey, do you guys have anything to eat? <laughs> I know. <laughs> Let me back up a little bit and say that what, Je brought Jesus and his, what brought Jesus and his disciples to this point. And we've taken a detour from uh, our lectionary readings, our cycle of readings, from Mark and John's stories of the resurrection and subsequent appearances of Jesus um, in order to hear from Luke's point of view. After the women and Peter discover the tomb is empty, we're told that a pair of Jesus' followers are walking to Emmaus. Now, it happens that neither of them is among the remaining 11 core disciples, but they are definitely well known in that circle. Emmaus is roughly seven miles away from Jerusalem, and as they're going, they are joined by none other than Jesus himself, but they don't recognize him. That seems to be a common feature in some of these resurrection appearances. So they're talking about what has just taken place and Jesus asks them about it, about what they're talking about. He joins their conversation, and he ends up opening their eyes to the scriptures. They invite him to join them when they reach their destination for supper, and it's then, finally, as he breaks bread and blesses it, that they realize who they are speaking to. And suddenly he disappears at that recognition, and he reappears as they are meeting with the, the two that had traveled to Emmaus, are meeting with the 11, just as suddenly as he had disappeared in Emmaus. One of the things I love is that in that breaking of bread, we get that beautiful line that resonates even in our own Eucharist, that he has, was known to them in the breaking of the bread. And now that the two are with the 11, Jesus has a greeting for them. Peace be with you. It's familiar enough, it's common enough, but this must have knocked their socks off. For one, it's the first time that most of them have seen the resurrected Jesus. Truly any greeting at all was going to be pretty astounding. But as Bishop Rob Wright points out, these are the same ones the very same ones who couldn't stay awake with Jesus at his hour of need. They denied him, and then they finally fled the scene. Peace be with you is an option that Jesus chooses over all the other greetings that he might have given them. Hey, where were you guys is one that comes to my mind immediately. But that's not how Jesus shows up. Jesus shows up in a spirit of love and peace, not condemnation and judgment. And in doing so, he is, well, as he always is, a healing presence. 
He's not denying what happened and what the disciples did and didn't do, but neither is he absorbing that into his own character or carrying it forward in their relationship with him. Perhaps there's a lesson there for us as we reckon with our own failures and flaws and the failures and flaws of others. Not every relationship is going to be renewed after it has been fractured. In the book of Forgiving, Archbishop Tutu and his daughter Empau describe a fourfold path for forgiveness and for healing ourselves and the world. That path is admitting, admitting the wrong and acknowledging the harm, telling one's story and witnessing the anguish, asking for forgiveness and granting forgiveness, and finally, renewing or releasing the relationship. Hard work. Now, I'm not going to take a lot of time to mold Jesus' encounters with the disciples that we just heard into the fourfold path, though I think it certainly fits in a condensed version. It's enough to say here that Jesus' desire is to renew their relationship. A relationship can't be truly reconciled and renewed without going through that hard part of truth-telling. And I wonder if the fact that the scars remain is part of that truth-telling, part of telling the harm. We could come up with a lot of reasons why the resurrected Jesus appeared to the disciples rather than simply leave them with the empty tomb and trusting the rest to faith. We humans like proof, don't we? We're sensory in that way. It's not really a flaw, it's just how we're made, I think. We need to be able to see and touch and hear and smell. Today, I'm struck by this idea of Jesus wanting to appear to these disciples so that he can renew the relationship with them after they've deserted him, after they've denied him and also so that he can break that bread and eat fish with them. The Gospel of John also tells us that the resurrected Jesus ate breakfast with his disciples, fish and bread being on the menu in that case as well. It's a common breakfast during the time. I prefer oatmeal myself. But it also reminds me of the feeding of the 5,000. Maybe that's intentional on both Luke and John's part to recall the power of God, to recall the power of blessing bread that is given. John's gospel in that same scene also includes the story of Peter, who walks on the beach with Jesus, and Jesus asks him three times, Peter, do you love me? Mirroring and reversing Peter's three denials. Another instance where Jesus is renewing the relationship I know that part of why the gospel writers choose to include these scenes of Jesus eating meals with the, the disciples is to drive home the point that Jesus is not a ghost, not an apparition. But similar to the other miracles Jesus performed, it's never only about the miracles. It's about what the miracles point to. And Jesus is pointing to the power of sharing a meal in a relationship. In Love is the Way, a book by Bishop Michael Curry, he writes about his early days as a bishop of North Carolina. You may or may not know, but every 10 years, bishops in the Anglican Communion from all over the world are invited to the Lambeth Conference uh, convened by the Archbishop of Canterbury. In this first time that Bishop Curry made the trip, some bishops were included, and there was a lot of anger amongst the community directed towards the U.S. because of issues around sexuality and inclusion. Bishop Curry arrived at Lambeth in that atmosphere, and it was hard as he described it, you can imagine. He's angry at his fellow bishops, and they're angry at him. Conversations are not fruitful as the conference goes on. But at some point, Bishop Curry decides he's just going to sit down and eat at a table with those who disagree with him. Skip to the end of the story. The short version is 
that the atmosphere started to improve and relationships that were fractured started to reform a little bit. Now, I wish I could tell you that the disagreements are now fully resolved, but I can't, and you may know that already. Breaking bread with others is not a cure-all, but it is a starting point. <coughs> Bishop Curry witnessed to that through his stories from Lambeth, and anyone here who serves with Calvary through Loaves and Fishes, Saturday Cafe, and now The Journey can pair, bear witness as well to the healing power of a meal. I hope that you know that healing power of a meal through the Eucharist. And we share this meal together. And whether or not we agree on anything else, we can agree to share this table. We can agree on the bread and the wine. The takeaway is not that all can be solved by sitting down over a meal. I wish it were that simple, but I'm a little naive, and even I'm not that naive. What I hope to share is that our starting points are in our common humanity, our shared experiences. We all need to eat. If we want to form or renew relationships that have been fractured, we don't start by trying to get to agreement on hot button issues of the day. We get there by meeting over our common humanity, our common experiences. I wonder if some of you saw the op-ed by Dr. Dawson in the Missourian earlier this week, where he says that for four glorious minutes during the eclipse, we were all one. We were all one in how tiny we are compared to the glorious mystery of the cosmos. It strikes me that Jesus chose to spend his last embodied moments on earth eating with the disciples and renewing relationships, having spent time with people who are preparing for their last days on earth. I know that these moments are reserved for the most important things. And so maybe we don't have to wait until our last moments to do some of these important things that we want to share meals with one another, not only with those who we already love and agree with, but maybe with those who we don't have much more in common with, at least not yet. So if you're wondering about that, what to do about a fractured relationship, you could do worse than saying, hey, you got anything to eat? <laughs> Why don't you share a meal with me? Amen. Please stand as you're able, and we will affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed as printed in your bulletin. We believe in one God.
Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. We pray especially for Michael, our presiding bishop, Dion, our bishop, Anne and Josh, our priests, Beth, our deacon, Darlene and Matt, our aspirants, and Susie, our intern. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the people and ministry of Trinity Episcopal Church in Kirksville and Carol, their priest. We also pray for Trinity's campus ministry at Truman State University. In our companion diocese of Puerto Rico, we pray for the people and ministry of Mission San Matias, Apostle in Lares. God, in your mercy, guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. We pray especially for Joseph, our president, Michael, our governor, and Barbara, our mayor. God, in your mercy, Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may honor its resources rightly in the service of others, and to your honor and glory. God, in your mercy, bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours, and grant that we may serve Christ in them, and love one another as Christ loves us. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, giving them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation. We pray especially for those on our prayer list and all those we now name aloud are in the silence of our hearts. God, in your mercy, hear our we commend to your mercy all who have died, especially Isabella Sheets, that your will for them may be fulfilled and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. God, in your mercy, hear our Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you in our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in everlasting life. Amen. Please stand as you are able. La paz de Cristo este siempre con ustedes. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
It's that time of year when it's like hot, yeah, heat in the morning, cool in the evening. All right. Hi. <laughs> Welcome to all of you, especially those who may be visiting with us. We are so glad that you're here. There is a gift bag um, out in our gathering space, our narthex, um, that we would love for you to have. Um, also a pew card in front if you would like to share information with us and we'd love to get to know you better. And uh, for those of you who um, have been here for a while longer, if you see someone who you don't recognize, introduce yourselves and just say welcome if you would. Um, let's see. After, do you want to say a little bit about the bazaar? Sure. All right. Um, you've probably noticed an announcement in the uh, bulletin about uh, today's meeting. And we have a specific agenda. We're going to try to tackle a couple of, of issues that uh, face us uh, as we move forward. But I did want to call attention to uh, two things. One, if you are interested in attending that meeting today, finding out a, a little bit more about the bazaar and how it works here at Calvary, if, particularly if you're new to the church, we would love to have you come and just join us. Uh, and uh, we'll try to find a place where you can be productive and happy working toward the bazaar, which will be happening that first Saturday in December. The other thing I want to point out is that the money from last year's uh, bazaar has now been dispensed. Connie was able to get checks to all the right people. Some of them were, it was kind of hard to find a mailing address for them. <laughs> it's like, we have money to give you. Please let us know how to get this to you. But um, the, the committee um, very carefully looked at different areas that we wanted to address with our outreach. So if you look at the Columbia Center for Urban Agriculture, that has to do with sustaining um, your own uh, food, being able to grow your own food and teaching people how to do that. Um, Medzu is an offshoot of the MU healthcare system and uh, they provide free clinic services. So it's a health service thing and particularly for women and children. Um, the food bank, everybody knows about the food bank and they can always use more money. And then City of Refuge is, a, I would say, a, a relatively new organization in Columbia, less than 10 years old, growing very quickly. They welcome uh, immigrant families in, try to uh, work with them on learning English, getting jobs. They just opened a daycare center, so they're providing uh, daycare for the smallest of those immigrant families. It's just, I was very proud of the committee because we, we chose a wide-reaching number of charities to give our money to this year. So um, last year we raised $10,000 and we split that up how we saw fit to, uh, to those four organizations and uh, we've received notification that they've all received it and how pleased they were that they were chosen this year. So thank you. And thanks to Ed and Tim who are chairing it this year and to Leanne and others who've done it in years past. We're so grateful. All right, a um, couple of events coming up in the weeks to come. We have next week um, the Bluffs Worship at 2 o'clock. You can talk to uh, Deacon Beth or Gail goes to that. Are there some others? Just if you want what it's like for an experience, Gail, I surprised the heck out of Gail on that one. Um, <laughs> um, and then also at 6 o'clock here at Calvary, um, Elfie, our youth group for 6th grade and through 12th grade is going to meet here. Um, we'll have lots of fun, talk about St. Paul and the epistles. And then uh, last but not least, the Journey Church. Um, we are gonna go there, bring a meal, and worship with them on the 28th. So again, Deacon Beth can be uh, contacted about that. Now I'm gonna turn it over to Josh, who has another announcement and for the blessing. Yes, I have one more announcement. The last couple of weeks, I've been telling you about March Ministry Madness, where we, the Episcopal Lutheran Campus Ministry, are competing with other Lutheran uh, Lumen Network uh, campus ministries because we are Episcopal and Lutheran and I wanted to report that as of last Monday we had moved up to third place so Woo! that's exciting uh, the the competition and the giving ends today if you're still interested let me know and we can talk more about that I can point you in the right direction uh, for how to do that but thank you for any of those who give or been praying for us or thought about giving we really do appreciate that also we're in third place which is amazing uh, birthdays, anniversaries. The whole family. Your birthday? birthday. Anniversary. 
I mean, you're Eric. Oh, Carl, man. 20? When is the day? Same day as your birthday. You all? I know. Well, we won't uh, talk about that. But anyway, my <laughs> birthday and birthday. birthday. All right. Well, let's start with the anniversary, 20th anniversary. Let us pray. Grant, O oh God, in your compassion that Carl and Erica, having taken each other in marriage and affirming again the covenant which they have made, may grow in forgiveness, loyalty, and love, and come at last to the eternal joys which you have promised through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now our birthdays. O oh God, our times are in your hands. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants Effie and Linda as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Happy birthday and happy anniversary. <laughs> now walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
continue in the bulletin with Eucharistic Prayer A, also found on page 361 of the Book of Common Prayer. God is with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who rose victorious from the dead and comforts us with the blessed hope of everlasting life. For to, you, to your faithful people, O Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when our mortal body lies in death, there is prepared for us a dwelling place eternal in the heavens. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious God, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and maker of all. Jesus stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink you, this, all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, Almighty God, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling Christ's death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in Christ. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through Jesus Christ, our Savior, by Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation.
gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
continuing with the post-communion prayer found in your bulletin. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have grace. Now the blessing of God Almighty, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Let us go forth rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Amen.